When Apple first launched the MacBook Pro Retina, it was clearly Apple at its best, taking something that the public imagined to be impossible and then making it not only possible, but packaging it in such a way that it looked like it had been appearing on laptops for years. But now, with the industry hot on its heels and some surpassing it, is the MacBook Pro the only laptop you should be considering? The first thing you'll notice is how thin the new MacBook Pro is and at 1.8 centimeters it's now beginning to encroach on the MacBook Air 2013 which measures in at 1.7 centimeters. Things get even more impressive when you look at their comparative footprints, with the 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina fitting comfortably within the Air, making Apple's thinnest laptop almost look wide in comparison. Of course, there's a trade-off somewhere, and that's the weight. The Pro Retina has reduced in weight from 1.62 kilograms to 1.57 on the 13-inch, while the 15-inch weighs 2.2 kilograms. The MacBook Pro comes running Apple's all-new operating system, Apple Mac OS X Mavericks. It comes with hundreds of new features, along with a brand new iWork and iLife, and the big shock is that the update is free, and the app's gratis on all new Apple devices. Some will argue that iWork will never compete with Microsoft Office, and die-hard users will be annoyed that Apple has removed some features in the process of simplifying, but the casual user is more than catered for. The truth of the matter is that if you want a class-leading productivity, you'll probably have to look elsewhere. For the casual user, like we said, iWork is more than adequate. Apple has retained the same 2560 by 1600 display as the previous generation, and honestly, we can see why they haven't changed it. Whilst not as scorchingly bright as, say, the Google much-hyped Pixel, the Pro's Retina display is a joy to behold. Colors are rich and perfectly reproduced, while text is pin sharp. We played a number of examples, including the 1080p trailer for The Hobbit and native 1080p 60 frames per second footage of Killzone Shadowfall. All performed incredibly well, and thanks to the hike in specs, all ran smoothly despite having at least four or five other apps open and running at the same time. Power has never been an issue for the MacBook Pro. In fact, if anything, Apple has overpowered the entire range. It's all changed now. The entry-level 13-inch model comes with only 128 gig of SSD, but for £1,249, you can buy the 13-inch model with a 2.4 gigahertz dual-core i5, 8 gig RAM, and a 256 gig hard drive. Compare that with the equivalent MacBook Air, and you'll find that actually the Air comes off more expensive. So what's the verdict? It's the 13-inch that really gets interesting for the MacBook Pro. In the past, the original 13-inch would have cost you £1,449 for the 128-gig model, and in return, you'd pay for something that was cutting edge. Things have changed, though. For £200 less, you can get the same 13-inch model, but now it's thinner, lighter, and comes with 256 gig of storage, 8 gig of RAM, and a faster processor. Even by Apple standards, that's an impressive trade-off, and one that becomes even more important when you take into account the MacBook Air. Compare the £1,249 13-inch Pro model with the equivalent spec MacBook Air and you'll find that by paying an extra £40, you get a Retina display, faster processor and more ports including HDMI, USB 3 and Thunderbolt 2.0, all in a package that is almost more portable than the Air itself. It's a baffling concept to think that Apple would have beaten their own product in such a way, but to our eyes, certainly, the new £1,249 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina is now the Apple laptop to beat. For the latest on Apple and laptops, please subscribe and keep a lock to tp.com for your latest tech news, reviews and features.